Hey, hey, ladies and gentlemen, it's me again, and I'm here with a woman after my own heart, Nicole Guillaume. Say hello, Nicole, to our audience. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Nicole. Nicole is in the United States, um, currently in Ohio. And why I'm so pleased to have her with us today is that she's a psychic, she's a light worker, and she's a spiritual mentor. So that means, if I'm right, uh, Nicole, you mentor people, you take them under your wing to teach them how to become psychic and how to use their psychic abilities, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I help people to tap into the gifts that they already have. Yeah. Sometimes they know they have them. Sometimes they don't. Uh -huh. And I start working with people wherever they are in their journey. And so I just help them to tap into their inner wisdom yeah. and bring those gifts out. And uh, it's a magical experience for everyone, including yeah. me. It's no, like an no, honor no, to be a part of it. Magical. <laughs> I mean, you know, when, when we're uh, channeling and, and when we're acting as mediums, all of a sudden information comes out that, you know, we couldn't possibly know on our own right. and, and the hair just stands on uh, you know on the on my arm I can see it raising you know so let's go back in time to petite Nicole <laughs> so, uh, because I know it's always different for everyone who does this kind of work um, it is uh, you know there things happen we're not sure and then we keep them to ourselves and and we don't tell anybody until we're old enough to to think, oh, forget that, you know, just start working with it. So how was it for you? When did it occur? How old were you? Well, um, the way that I tapped into my abilities and realized I had them, I think was uh, pretty unique. So um, I was, as a child, a very sensitive little girl, but I also grew up in a very religious and abusive household. And so uh, my parents Wait, didn't believe on. in... No, no, Nicola, I'll interrupt you just for a second. When you talk about abusive, are you talking about mental abuse? Were you talking about... Tell, tell us if you don't mind sharing. So, uh, yeah, there was definitely some mental abuse and emotional abuse. Okay. Um, my parents were very controlling. When I was little, they would smack my brother and I around. Like if we didn't agree with them, poof, you know, just yeah. they hit us. Um, and then when we were older and we could talk and <laughs> we could, you know, actually share with people what was going on in the house, they stopped the physical aspect. Mm -hmm. um, but the emotional aspect was, was right. still pretty prevalent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, that was that was not fun. Um, so growing up in that environment was obviously very difficult. And so a lot of my gifts were suppressed because I didn't have anyone I could talk to but about it, them. You had already experienced things occurring during. Yeah, that? I was. I was able to sense like I didn't know what clairsentience was mm -hmm. at the time, but I could very much feel so clairsentience. Yes. Feeling right. Right. Yeah. Clairsentient is when you're able to feel what's around you. Mm -hmm. And so I could sense the presence of, you know, just different beings in my room. I didn't know who they were most of the time. Sometimes I could sense if it was um, a more loving spirit or maybe a more neutral or <laughs> not exactly nice yeah, spirit. Not which friendly. thankfully, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Thankfully, there weren't too many of those, but they did show up once in a while. Um, and so that was just something I think I started to just kind of suppress and block out because it didn't seem useful. I didn't understand what was going on and just went about my life as I grew up. And um, so the way that my psychic abilities really started to brighten up for me was actually when I was in my early 30s. I oh. had decided to decorate my home for Halloween and I wanted to do a seance scene <laughs> inspired by Isn't excuse Halloween me. the best. You it is. It closet. absolutely is. <laughs> yeah, I know. We can get involved with our real witchy psychic selves. Yeah, yeah. Um so I wanted to make a seance scene that was inspired by the seance scene in Disneyland's The Haunted Mansion. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, I need to get some tarot cards. So I went online and started looking up different tarot cards. And I found a tarot set that I really loved, but it was $30 and I didn't want to pay that much for a tarot what was the, set. What was the name of the deck? Do you remember? It's no longer in print, but it was called the Wizard's Tarot. Mm -hmm. And there's several different wizard's tarot out now but it's not the same, the same. one so this mm -hmm. one's no longer in print yeah and so 
that deck haunted me. I thought about it for Literally. three days. I did. <laughs> yeah, I'd go to bed thinking about it. And finally, one morning, it was like 2 a.m. or 3 a.m., I woke up in the middle of the night thinking about this deck and I was like, I have to get it. I have to get it. So I went online, ordered it and was able to fall asleep. <laughs> so when the deck came in, I held those cards in my hands, looking through the images. And I was just like, this is too beautiful to use for decorations. Mm -hmm. So um, I decided that I was going to learn how to read them. So I bought different books. I took some online courses. I practiced with friends. And my abilities just completely blew up. Like they just got mm -hmm. in a very short amount of time. And it was shortly after probably, you, sorry, I would say, like, Nicole, when you say a short amount of time, give us a frame, time frame. So yeah, I was about to say it was probably around two to three months. Read. Yeah, it was probably, yeah, it was probably two to three months Very where it just short. like really was. Very short. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not like I was trying to open up those abilities. I was just working with Tara. I was yeah. fascinated by these cards. So, um, I started doing readings for people and then I opened up like a little side business where, you know, I was charging, I think only $5 at the time for tarot readings and spirits started to come through. And that was very fascinating to me. And I didn't exactly understand what was going well, on, but right, now wait a minute. Now wait, let, let's put a little more detail uh, into the, sure. the description because, all right, you have a, a tarot deck. I've got, Oh, about 150 in my home. Um, <laughs> so you you make a spread, right? You mix yes. the cards, put the spread. And when you say that spirit started coming in, what does it look like for you? So I remember the the most prevalent instance of this. It wasn't the first, but it's the one that really stuck in my mm -hmm. mind. It was among the first. So I had laid out some cards and I felt and saw in my mind's eye these two gentlemen come forward mm -hmm. and so they were standing on the other side of my desk so i'm trying so hard to read these cards for my client but i can't because there's these two men looking at me yeah. so i stopped the reading and i'm like you know i'm very distracted right now because i have two gentlemen here in the spirit that want to connect with you and she's like oh and i said yeah so i explained them to him I, I explained them to her i told her one was in a hoodie and he was looking down and he seemed really upset and the other this um blonde haired guy seemed kind of you know built like he was athletic had his arm over the man that was wearing a hoodie and was telling him it's okay don't worry about it everyone's fine so my client was like, oh, I know exactly who that is. Turned out they were these were two of her college buddies that had died in a horrendous car accident. Mm -hmm. And the one that was crying that was wearing the hoodie was the one responsible for it. Uh -huh. And the athletic one was the one that was, you know, that was comforting him um, was the passenger in that car. Um, and so we were able to have like a spirit communication, which was <laughs> surprising to both of us because tell me, Nicole, she had ordered a tarot wait, reading. <laughs> you weren't, you, this was not only on a $5 dime, was it? <laughs> it was actually, yeah, because that was at the very beginning of all of this. So yeah, she, yeah, it was, it was on a $5 budget. <laughs> okay, so, 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 now, so that's the first, all right? Now, of course, this was surprising both to you and for the client. How did you react? Not to this, to what had occurred. What was the first thing you did? Well, I'm going to do this for other people because it's so easy because I can do it. Um, how can I go about it? First, let me try with my friends. What were your first thoughts about that? I just thought it was a fluke. Like I was just <laughs> like, I can't believe that happened. And, um, and so I just kind of put it to si put it to the side as like a really cool once in a lifetime experience. Like I didn't mm -hmm. think it would happen again. Not, I did not think it would when happen again. When that door is right. open, people come in. You know, they just <laughs> that's come exactly in. right. Yeah. So um, so then the the next day, someone's dad came through, and so it started with another client. To with mm -hmm. another client, right. And so it Tell was me just when you really ra fascinating. raise the prices. <laughs> when when I raised the prices, 
It probably would have taken, I think it was about a year later, <laughs> actually, because mm -hmm. that's when it felt more right. consistent and mm -hmm. natural. Uh, I had also spoken to a couple of friends at that point who were mediums and they were telling me you're a medium and I'm like, you're crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, right. And I think that I had a really hard time believing that I was a medium for two reasons. One, because of how I grew up. And second, because you always hear these stories of people who have been able to talk to spirits since they were little tots. And that wasn't my experience. I know, and I so, know. But, and, and the problem with this, and I'll you know, say this for our audience as well, is that there are very few people to talk to about this, uh, you know, colleagues. And so when yeah. I saw, you know, when I found you and I thought, oh, I'm going to jump on her. She's, gonna, <laughs> she's coming to my place and she's going to explain, you know, so my, my clients, my audience, everyone who, I, who is listening will understand as well. Even though, Nicole, I, I understand it's a little different for everyone, but the fact remains that a medium is one who communicates with those who have passed and they right. relay messages, right? Yes. Now, we're up to the year mark, right? And mm -hmm. you started thinking about doing this on a regular basis, right? Because mm -hmm. there were there was a certain amount of reliability, you knew that they were coming in each time, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, what happened then? For example, and this is why I'm asking: Did it happen that people would read that you offered services of mediumship, purchase the service, and then come to you and say, "Look, I want to talk to my dad. I want to talk to my sister who passed." How did that develop? That's a good question. So, um, yeah, I did end up um, mentioning after a year that I do mediumship readings. And once I started talking about that more and talking about my experiences with um, just talking to different spirits, it's like people were like, Tara, why would I want to go <laughs> to you for Tara when I can talk to my deceased loved one. And so uh, people very much jumped on the opportunity to have um, those sessions with me. What's interesting is once I shifted, and you can let me know if this has been your experience yeah. too. Um, once I shifted where I was basically doing purely mediumship, after about six months to eight months, I noticed it wasn't as easy anymore. So there were times where it felt like I was really having to focus harder than usual to bring someone through. Sometimes no one would come through and that's when the imposter syndrome hit like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, have I been making this, this up this whole time? Well, no, this is quite interesting <laughs> that you mentioned this, but that has never happened to me, that imposter syndrome. Neither has it ever happened to me that people don't come through. I'll tell you why. A client comes, knocks on my door, orders the service and says, I'd like to talk you know, in, in all uh, communicating via email. I'd like to talk to my dad, my brother, my sister and all of that. I ask for their, usually ask for their first names, but during the reading, I will do that. I immediately tap in to see if they're willing to come in before we go into the right. session or, and then it, then it works. What does occur, and this you'll find occurs to you as well, is that different entities come in yes. and the first time that happened i thought okay guys we gotta go home you know close it and i'm thinking wait let, let's do this tomorrow it happened to me the first time i told the client look there's something off here let's uh, let's reschedule and then i understood well it's all about psychic hygiene and cleansing before i see your uh, your hand of fatima around your neck uh, on your on your chain there and uh, that keep evil spirits away um it, it it is because people ask me well how do you know it's my dad how do you know and, and and okay i can't put it in writing i can't you know give you the seal of approval come in for the reading and and you'll see for yourself you know right um so so that isn't you know i didn't have this syndrome that imposter syndrome but i can say nicole that sometimes and I do this live on my YouTube channel, um, sometimes the person says such odd things that you wonder if, is that what they said? Did they really right. say that? I mean, what should I do? Should I tell the person? 
or or what you know and and yeah that has happened what is your experience about the actual the relaying process because do you have your clients come and ask questions and then you act as a third person or you have the voice come through you and uh, your first person you're relaying the message as if you were their father or their lover so i start off my sessions with seeing who's around that client and you're very right in saying that you know people will come to you asking saying i want to talk to my brother or my father even if they don't say that they have a certain expectation and so one of the things that i've noticed and um you know i didn't realize this you know years ago but i notice it now is that if there's someone that comes through that your client doesn't necessarily want to talk to they're not going to put two and two together because they're looking specifically for someone else. And so it's not that someone didn't come through or that you got the information wrong. It's that they're trying to tune into someone specific. And if they don't I let see. you know that, that can be that can be a little bit of a problem. No, I, but I, as far as <clears throat> I that that is a problem it was a problem in the beginning for me. And then I started just honing in my, you know, honing my skills to think I'm going there, I'm picking that person up and having them sit right. down and talk. That's it. You know? Right. And, and so then I had this little step beforehand asking them if they would come in, you know, instead of creating a schedule that then had to be revised and all of that. But so, so now we have after the year, then you started the service and you have started it. So how long have you been doing this so far? I have been doing this for about a decade now. Yeah. <laughs> it's been about good. 10 years now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. And, um, and uh, it's such a rewarding experience, isn't it? It is. It really yes, is. Yes, absolutely. The only really bad part of this is that you can't exchange. There are not many people who do it. So, I mean, I just can't say to somebody, hey, did you feel the other day? Did that happen to you too? Or what? Right. You know, I just can't do that. And that's, uh, you know, but I know what I hear. I know what I see. So I don't have that doubt. There's no, no doubt there. But um, what's the next step for you? So what I love to do is I actually love teaching people how to do this on their own. Mm -hmm. I think that everyone has some form of psychic abilities. I think everyone is intuitive on some level. Yeah. And I do think that while not everyone is a medium, I think everyone has the ability to connect to their own loved ones on the other side. And the real issue here is that we just haven't been taught that. Okay, and now. I'll stop yeah. you because I don't know what I'm going to ask you how, when, where, how much. <laughs> right. Okay, because a lot of people are out there listening to us, and I get this question over and over and over again. And I have other things, and I mentor, I don't mentor. Um, I do have coaching uh, hours, but a specific mediumship mentoring program, no. And I have to say that the world over, there, I found I had found one in, in Zurich, in Switzerland, but that is closing. And mm -hmm. there might be spot seminars around the world that I have not found yet. So let's say I don't want to ask you that specific things, but let's say for, for a card reading, a tarot card reading, you put down in your on your website, tarot card reading, 30 minute tarot, 30 minute tarot card reading or five card tarot, or whatever, mm -hmm. and you give it a price, right? Right. With the mediumship, what is what is it that we'll see when we go to your website so um for the mediumship right now um i am really trying to focus on teaching people how to do this on their own right uh and so the reason for that is mediums aren't always available when you need them to be if you no. are in a really dark place yeah. and yeah. you are grieving heavily yeah. and the medium you want to go to has a two week wait list or a two month okay. wait yeah, list yeah, or yeah. a two year wait that's ah, too long you know so when people go to my website right now they'll see that i have a program called embracing heaven okay embracing in fact i'm heaven is the program embracing name. heaven okay Yes. In fact, um, starting in, in March, I'm going to be doing um, group mentorship for Embracing Heaven for people who want to have more um, in-person guidance, or I should say interactive guidance, and they're maybe not as motivated to take an online course on their own, but if they okay. have a schedule with someone, okay. right. Now, 
how so we'll, often it'll be a class when how many is it a package or how does that work yeah so um the mentorship program that's coming it'll be eight weeks long so basically two months we will meet um once a week in a group how most long, likely on hours? a saturday mm -hmm. the so it's every week for eight weeks we'll meet in a group probably on saturday and the sessions will be anywhere between one hour and two hours long mm -hmm. depending on what the um the exercises for uh -huh. that day for that lesson and they'll also get two one-on-one -on -one sessions mm -hmm. with me in, as well the so package. they'll be group and private mm -hmm. yes in the package and yeah how are those one-on-one -on -one, uh sessions how long do they last um those are about an hour <clears throat> they're anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour okay. depending on what happens because <laughs> what's fun about those is we'll set them up and we'll think that we're going to help that person work on their clairs or work through some type of question they have on with the session clairs. and when a lot say, of times when you say on their clairs the clear audience clairvoyance all of those right. clairs mm -hmm. yes um but a lot of times their loved ones are right there during the session yeah talking yeah, to both of us and yeah. so it turns into a mediumship session a lot of times which is actually a lot of fun mm -hmm. um but you never know what's going to happen mm -hmm. when you walk into these sessions because you don't know where that person is until you tune into them yeah and they may not always understand what's happening with them especially if they're still very heavy in their grief so there might be some healing that needs to take mm -hmm. place um before they're able to open up a little bit more to receive that um yeah that information from from spirit so <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> so that's the big thing that i'm pushing right now is the embracing heaven because it's very heavy on my heart to teach people how uh -huh. to do this yeah it's something, um, it's, it's a calling you you know it does come you wouldn't do it if you didn't feel the need to do it obviously right yeah um there was also, <laughs> oh man, so I had this experience. Yes, I am. I had Here this experience. The stories. <laughs> right, absolutely. I had this experience a few months ago where I saw a very famous medium. I will not mention this medium's mean name because saw, we don't need to go you there. You saw you went face to face with this person? You you yourself went It there? was an online, yeah, it was, it was one of those online um, events. We gotta get a drink of water. Oh, and you were, you went to their event. I went to their event because yeah. I love watching other, other <clears throat> mediums and psychics perform. Yeah. Right. I like to see their process. I like to see how they of relay course. messages. I like to just bask in their aura like it's yeah. magic. I love it. So I went to see this very well-known medium mm -hmm. who's been doing this for 30 years. This person's written some New York best-selling mm -hmm. books and had his own show for a while. So we know it's a man. You said his. <laughs> you know it's a man. Yeah, you know it's a man. Yeah. And I went to his online event just really expecting to be wowed. I kid you not, he had more misses than hits and my jaw dropped. Well, wait, 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 wait. Now, now, misses and hits. So misses is when they don't get something right and hits is when they get something right. But right. in relation to who? To people asking in person or right. online? All right, give right. me an example. Can you give us an example? Okay, so <clears throat> there was a woman who he had, who he claims he tapped into and he says, you know, I've got your mom here. And she's like, really, you have my mom, that's great. And he says, um, was she shot and killed? Just like that blatant. The, <laughs> was the, she the, shot and killed? The, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so the, the woman was taken back and she's like, no, no, it was, it was nothing like that. And he's like, okay, well, who was it that was shot? And she's like, I, I don't have anyone that was shot. He was adamant about it. He's like, well, was someone shot in the brain? Was someone shot in the chest? And it got to the point where he was being so aggressive about it. Yeah. I was getting uncomfortable. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, it's not nice. Yeah. No. And it's like, you know, even if someone had passed in that form yes. and she's telling you no, yes. you need to respect that and yes, back of off. Course. Of course. There's another thing to be said. Um, remember, you, you asked me, I don't know if this happens to you, but sometimes the person doesn't come in, the spirit doesn't come in. And I started talking about negative energy coming in. Another thing right. that happens, um, that happened and happened at least three times since I started doing mediumship live on my channel, I 
my guides stopped me from doing it a month, two mm. months, three months. Because of the, how can I say, the sensationalism of it. It's not about sensationalism. It's about right. helping people. It's about something else. So I stayed away and then came because what I find is people write to me, can you um, can you channel uh, so-and-so and so is someone. He disappeared mysteriously, you know, or this movie star and that movie star. And what I right. will find always is that they're earthbound. They died, they haven't mm -hmm. crossed. And so that seems to be a specialty of mine. And I, you know, cross them over. But in terms of what you're saying, an event, I... I can't face something like that, nor can I be part of it to watch. But like you say, you're curious. You want to see how they right. were. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting. It was, it was heartbreaking for me, honestly. And it why? was heartbreaking why? for me. Because there's so many reasons for it. I was heartbroken because this is someone who I believe is a cold reader. I don't believe do he has the abilities reader? that he's... So a cold mean? reader is someone who will look at you and they will say something. kind of read your face yeah. and they'll figure out your personality. So they get you to warm up before they actually do any type of reading for you. Mm -hmm. They'll talk to you a little bit first though. One of the things with me is like, I have all of my readings where they're voice only because I don't want to see the person I'm talking to. I don't want to, want to, see, I I I don't want to see... I. I yeah. cut the video off when we're channeling, when we're doing the... Exactly, talking. yeah. And a lot of people want the video on, but there's too many visual there's cues. There's too many distractions, and yeah. There's that too. And so that's what this person was doing. He was very clearly using visual cues, and it was it was heartbreaking to see that he was... Messing it if up. If people don't know what cold reading is, they, they can look it up, but fraudulent mediums will use oh, okay. this oh, technique. I see. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and the problem is that, you know, mediums get ridiculed uh -huh. for God, prospering man. off of people's grief. Yeah, you know, we're, yeah. we're constantly being we told that name. we're fraud. Oh, we we do. Name. Yeah. And the reality is that we have to charge for our services so we can have a livable income so we can continue to do this work. Right. I, that's yeah, that's why we have to put a price table. to it. All right. Right. And then you have people like the gentleman whose name I will not mention, yeah. who is taking advantage of people and charging a phenomenal amount of money for it. So these yeah. people are showing up to connect with their loved ones and what they're yeah. getting is a show. Mm -hmm. And it and it was so disappointing for me too because this guy was one of my heroes yeah, <laughs> you know i had yeah, read yeah. his books a myth has i died, believed but... in him mm -hmm. yeah exactly but and so it was heartbreaking to you let's go back to you sure. nicole um <laughs> because uh, one of the topics you mentioned that you would be willing to talk about um is is psychic development and and i imagine that the psychic development is just has been discussed already say because being a medium also involves uh, honing your psychic skills and right. what you do in mentoring would involve that as well am i right sure yes okay. now there's another uh, question you mentioned um about highly sensitive persons how can you be a highly sensitive person without losing your mind Mm -hmm. You have the floor. We all want to know. <laughs> all right. So for people who are highly sensitive person, you might find that you are overstimulated or really agitated by specific sounds, by very loud music, like uh, lawnmowers and that sort of noise can really kind of set me off. <laughs> and so one of the things that I've learned to do as an HSP and especially as a psychic HSP is to first of all, realize it's a gift. Mm -hmm. It's a gift. It's not a curse. It is a gift because the more sensitive you are actually to outside occurrences, that just means you have really a larger awareness. Yeah. You have more awareness of your surroundings than other people do. Yeah. And that's actually really cool because that means that you most likely have a better awareness of the spirit world and sure. angels and sure. guides. Sure. And if you're able to really just kind of tune into yeah. that, yeah instead of the reality that's kind yeah, of yeah. triggering you mm -hmm. that can be so helpful and so healing yeah um 
So that's what I've learned to do is I've learned to, when I'm feeling really kind of triggered or agitated, I'll like tune into that one angel and be like, all right, help me out. There you (laughs) go. And, but this implies something else, uh, Nicole. It also implies that people would know either their guides, spirit guides, or angels. If they don't, they can hone in on a specific angel that, or a, a guide that they have traditionally grown up with in their culture yeah right um all right i so far we're on the same page i agree with you now there's um another topic that you mentioned is managing depression now i was surprised Uh managing depression as a psychic light worker it i understand where you're coming from with that topic because you know especially in the beginning of somebody's work. Let's talk about that depression, how it comes to a light worker, when especially. I think that light workers who grew up in abusive relationships and controlling environments yeah. are just more keyed into it because of how our bodies and our mind, minds become programmed living in that type of environment. And it's not just towards people who are abused when they were children if somebody ended up in really any type of i think abusive relationship and that abusive or abusive culture Mm -hmm. you know like a work culture of course that does a lot to a person because then they start to um they start to doubt their worth they start to doubt their confidence they start to wonder if they're really good at these things they start to question if they're a good wife or whatever it is and so that can really do a number on on a person. So I believe that depression a lot of times is trauma that we haven't been able to release fully. Mm -hmm. And I also believe that it can be a um, symptom of being in an environment that is not conducive for our own growth. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's unfortunate people will end up in situations that are unfair to them and they're trapped for whatever reason. Do you mean uh, situations on unfair to them what so by that it could be that um you know for example like right now the world is kind of obsessed with narcissists right we hear a lot of talk about narcissists (laughs) and covid that's true um but narcissists tend to have this very charming demeanor about them they're very likable they're they've got these big dreams they can seem like wonderful people and so you know when they go out and they date they can put on the charm and make someone feel really seen really valued and they think oh my gosh i met this wonderful person and so then they end up getting married and within a few months Mm -hmm. the mask comes off and you realize who it is that you really got and maybe you're trapped in that situation for financial reasons for social reasons or your mom's putting a lot of pressure on you to have babies or you have kids you know you're stuck with that person and it's unfair because it's not what you signed up for it's mm-hmm. unfair because this person tricked you and even intuitive people, you know, fall for this. I've known very psychic people who fell and myself included, you know, fall for someone who was a narcissist. And I think yep. a lot of times inside you're getting a little red flag, but because they're putting on this wonderful show, you start to think, oh, I, I can't be tuning into this, right? This person's too nice. Um, and so when people find themselves in that type of situation where their dreams have been shattered or someone has been pulling the wool over their eyes that they've been used and it really messes with their sense of self, uh, that's when someone can get very depressed. And I think that when you start to question your own self-worth or you start to feel trapped or whatever it is, um, it can really kind of miss with your ability to, well, not your psychic ability so much because you still have those, but you start to, you, you don't trust them as much anymore. You right. don't have a lot of faith and right. confidence right. in them anymore. Because right. it's like, well, I was wrong right. about all this stuff. Why yeah, wouldn't yeah. I be wrong about this? Uh, let, me, let me throw out an idea here for you. Because you started sure. to, with the five you know, dollar tarot reading and then got up. And now you're in a group situation where you're mentoring people who want to learn. And that's a lot of responsibility. Um, it it's a lot of responsibility because you're responsible for for the way people develop, you stimulate them. It's not that you're, either, you know, you can always speak to someone, you never know how they take what you're saying, but it is a certain amount of responsibility when you interact with somebody. I ask 
um, I like to ask someone uh, when they tell me about the development of their profession, where do you see yourself next after the coaching? Do you, I'll give you a couple of ideas, all right? Do you imagine that you would pick, say, three or four extremely sensitive, you know, I became part of a group here locally in Italy because we do, you know, we do concentrated uh, crushing of n negative entities when it gets really bad for us and we meet every three mm. months, right? So do you see yourself, uh, uh, I don't know, creating some form of powwow with powerful people, a powerful people powwow or something? Do you imagine that you... Um, people usually have the idea of, okay, I'll write a book. That I don't mean that. I mean in your profession. Well, is there something that you would like to try that you think that you would be um, capable of doing that you've always wanted to do? Do you have any ideas on Let's, that? It's funny that you mentioned um, your, your group of people that yeah. you meet up with because um, a friend of mine, and I have been talking about possibly putting together, <coughs> excuse me, a um, conference of some sort. Mm -hmm. So we would like to hold a weekend conference and have other um, spiritual teachers on different topics come in right. and teach different things at these um, conferences mm -hmm. and seminars. And so we would like this to be something that we do uh, two to three times a year, a year and hold it at like a nice resort. Yeah. Ah, so in so person, that's, you're, you're, you're mm -hmm. going to be adventuresome and try to hold it in person. I mean, that's a taboo right. here in this side of the world in Europe, you know, getting planning anything in person is almost impossible today with what's going on. It is difficult. It yeah. definitely has its challenges. Um, and because of just the way that the world is right now, uh, international travel is kind of yeah. out of question well, even, yeah, <laughs> right now. Travel. I mean, there's been so many delays and, and cancellations, but that's there has been. That's interesting. So um, we can count on finding information about this, right? You're going to send me information when that that happens will you have a section on people who can come in uh, online as well uh watch online do you, you know a web I don't webinar. know if we'll have the capacity to do the webinar thing because I mean there's still the whole thing of we would have to find the venue and right. we would have to fit there's just a lot to figure out still well, so we're still just in the, in the that's in brainstorming the yeah, yeah that's in the future phase. so all right <laughs> wow thank you so much and I have here um a number of um Instagram, Facebook, and all of that, YouTube, where they can find you, people or the audience can find you looking for the name Guiding Echoes, Guiding Echoes, Correct. all right? And I will write this at the bottom of the episode, in the episode description. Nicole, thank you so much for coming and tell us, uh, telling us all your secrets <laughs> and ideas My and pleasure. your dreams for the future. I hope to have you back on in the future after you have um, other ideas or after you've done the conference and maybe you can share with us some things that occurred. Thanks again, Nicole. Absolutely. Thank you. Bye-bye.